My name is Dominic Iacono. I'm the director of the Syracuse University Art Galleries and the curator of Carl Schrag Memories and Premonitions. It's an exhibition that's a retrospective exhibition of uh, Carl Schrag's career. Uh, he was an artist that was born in 1912 in Germany, so we're celebrating the uh, 100th anniversary of his birth. You might ask what the connection is between Syracuse University and uh, Carl Schrag. Uh, back in the 1960s, the university was making an effort to acquire the work of uh, important artists and their papers. Uh, Carl Schrag was one of those artists that was asked to uh, provide uh, examples of his work to the university and to leave his papers with the university so that uh, visiting scholars might be able to work with both sets of materials. Uh, the university library maintains the papers and the university art collection maintains uh, the artwork. Uh, throughout Carl's career, uh, over at various times, he would make gifts to the university of his graphic output. And uh, we've just received uh, the final installment from his heirs of uh, works that were com completed in the 1990s, just before he passed away. So we have about 250 of his prints, his entire graphic output, uh, here at the, uh, at the University Art Collections and the SU Art Galleries. Uh, since it's a, a retrospective exhibition, uh, there's somewhat of a, a chronological order to, uh, to much of the exhibition, but within that there are also some subgroups. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, he was well known for his landscapes, so we have a gallery that's devoted to his landscape paintings and prints. Uh, in his work, especially uh, from the 1940s and 1950s, Schrag was developing a style that used a very expressive uh, mark, uh, a calligraphic brush stroke that uh, uh, really indicates to the viewer uh, issues about uh, motion, space. They really add to the overall composition and design of the work. And he was developing that as a very uh, personal and expressive style uh, over the first uh, 25 or 30 years of his career. And so we try to show the development of that mark making uh, through one of the galleries. Uh, another gallery shows his portrait uh, paintings and prints, and specifically um, self-portraits that uh, really chronicle how Carl looked at himself. There are also some wonderful images in that, ex in that portion of the exhibition uh, that deal with his color and the way he developed color for his, uh, for his portraits. Uh, so a visit to the exhibition, you get to see uh, his career develop in um, a sense of time with the uh, landscapes, the portraits. Uh, as a curator for the exhibition, I had the uh, opportunity to look at uh, several hundred images that Call created. I'm very familiar with his, uh, his print output because I've written uh, uh, two catalogs, Raisin A, about um, uh, his, his graphic output. Uh, then I got to visit uh, his heirs and uh, see a large number of his, his oil paintings, his gouache paintings and drawings. So as I was looking at all of these, um, uh, these pieces, uh, what really developed for me was this uh, ability to look at his career and see the development of that calligraphic line, uh, how he created a very expressive surface. Uh, in his paintings, his prints, his drawings, and, and the gouache work. And so that became an important element for the exhibition to really develop that. Um, we've used a lot of comments that Carl himself made during his career. He was, uh, he was an educator, a very well-spoken man, and uh, we also use comments from other curators uh, and uh, art critics, especially in New York City, to help develop 
uh, this uh, theme about Carl's work and what he was doing during his career. Carl Schrag made a comment at one point in his career that uh, when he painted, uh, he would like to go out into nature, take a look at something that he would later want to depict in, in either paint or, or uh, as, a, as a print, and he would then go back to his studio and try to record his memories of what that scene looked like. He wasn't a plain air painter. He didn't go out into the field and carry the canvas with him and, and make the painting. He wanted to make the painting from memory. He did make notes. He did jot down uh, ideas uh, while he was in the field. Uh, but the final composition, he thought, was much more alive and uh, accurate if he was expressing his feelings about what he had seen and not specifically what he had seen. And so uh, his color works that way. It's not necessarily an accurate color that a, a, a color photograph might take of a particular scene. It's the way Carl saw those colors. And, and so for a lot of viewers, we look at the pieces and it's almost as if we're seeing them for the first, seeing those, those scenes for the first time. It might be something very familiar to us, a, a landscape or a seascape that um, the landscape might have an apple tree. And so we have this image of what an apple tree would look like. But after Carl has created it, uh, it seems to be much more alive. And it seems to have a bit of Carl in the representation of that, that scene. And that's, that's really a wonderful thing to, uh, to realize. There, there are uh, a number of pieces in the gallery which I think are um, really typical of Carl during certain points in his career. Uh, early on, there's a painting called Rainstorm, and there's a, uh, a print that's made in, in the same time period called Rain in the Sea, and the two of them uh, share a lot of graphic devices. Um, the, uh, the pieces show the development of this excited line, this mark making that he's going to develop through the rest of his career. It also uh, gives us an idea of what he was thinking about, what he was feeling when he saw this particular landscape. The um, nature, the idea of nature, the, the movement of the wind, how it plays with the water. Um, how um, it changes our impression of of light because the uh, like most of us would experience a rainstorm uh, cloud cover uh, limits the amount of light that comes into the scene so colors aren't as rich and vibrant as they might be if it was a sunny day so he records the changes in that atmosphere the changes in the light uh, later on, he does an image that's called Soft Meadow. It's not that many years later. It's about a decade later than, uh, than Rainstorm. Uh, but there, his brushstroke has gotten much broader. And rather than it being in a, uh, a dark environment, it's the um, change of light during the day. We're going f uh, into the evening, and uh, the sun is setting. And all those subtle colors, the shadows, the, uh, uh, the variations on particular colors, he starts to develop in this particular landscape. But it's still uh, a landscape that shows uh, a certain amount of energy, uh, movement of the trees, movement of the wind, uh, the clouds in the sky. It's, and it's of this particular scene that all of us have seen uh, many times before. But through Carl's eyes, uh, it's just a, a new experience. There is one particular uh, print that I think um, has become an important graphic device for our exhibition. It's, that's called Overgrown Path. It's a lithograph that Carl made in the uh, early 1960s when he was visiting uh, the Tamarind print shop. Uh, at that time it was located in Los Angeles. 
a call went out and spent a summer there and he made a number of lithographs. He wasn't known for making lithographs at that time and so this was something that excited him, the opportunity to work with uh, some very important uh, printers who knew their craft very well as well as Carl knew uh, intaglio, etching, aqua tinta. And so Carl was excited to be working with these men and he went out and developed this particular image, Overgrown Path. It's very colorful. So he, he creates this particular image, uh, Overgrown Path, which is a very colorful lithograph, but it really shows his ex expressive mark making uh, during the 1960s. You're looking into an element of nature an overgrown path that, that he just fills with uh, trees, brambles, bushes, uh, flowers. Uh, uh, to me, the idea of this particular landscape uh, is to help one get a sense of what it's like walking into this area where uh, it's entirely nature. It's, it's just the trees, the bushes, the, the bramble and this overgrown path that um, we've all experienced, but Carl brings it to life with these wonderful colors. Carl made several comments during his uh, career that um, drawing and printmaking were sister arts. That was one of his, uh, one of his comments. As a teacher, as an instructor, uh, he would let his students know that the foundation of any good painting was going to be drawing. Of any good print, drawing was at its core. And so that really is an important element in, in Carl's career. His ability to develop line and make line expressive. It's not necessarily to be able to uh, create an image that um, looks like a photograph. Uh, it's, it's the idea of being able to capture uh, the essence of that particular landscape or a portrait, if he's doing a portrait. His drawing, his printmaking, and his painting all rely on Carl's ability to capture those ideas that he had uh, on the canvas, on the sheet of paper. And uh, this exhibition you really get to see that. You get to see how uh, he's able to imbue a line uh, with some kind of character. How he's able to work the color so that the color isn't just a bit of nature. It's, it, it expresses a feeling, an emotion. Uh, and then combined, these things are really telling us all about Carl and what Carl was looking at. One of the talks that I intend to give is about uh, Carl Schrag and his association with Atelier 17. Uh, that was an atelier that was founded by Stanley William Hayter in Paris, but was moved to New York uh, during the time of Nazi aggression in the, uh, in, in the late 1930s, early 1940s. Uh, the atelier was actually moved to New York in 1940 and was associated with the New School for Social Research. Call started working at the Atelier in 1945, and one of the prints in the exhibition that I talked about earlier, Rain in the Sea, uh, was a print that he made at the, at the Atelier. Uh, other artists at the Atelier, in, including uh, Miro and uh, Jacques Lipschitz, appreciated Carl's ability to create prints. This was an atmosphere where people shared ideas about how to create graphic images. Actually, people that were accepted to the atelier were only those who already knew how to make engravings, etchings, and aquatics. It was not a learning environment uh, so that artists could um, uh, find out how to make uh, these particular types of images. They already had to possess that knowledge. So it was sharing the ideas of what they were trying to achieve in their work. Call was very good at that. And uh, so good, in fact, that when uh, Stanley Hayter went to bring the atelier back to Paris, 
he asked that Carl take over the New York Atelier, which he did for, uh, for a short period of time. He became the director of the Atelier.